record when they're done. For Coach, those last 10 possessions, uh, they went scoreless, uh, nine of 10 of them. And talking about just the defense and how you wanted it to change, you know, this whole week, what was the difference in the fourth quarter? Um, it was the grind, you know. Um, it was individuals who made their mind up. Uh, they, they were going to impact the outcome. And you know, they knew kind of where we are at this point. Uh, and every game that we win is going to have to be and start on the defensive end of the floor. Um, you know, I thought Isaac was phenomenal um, when Kuzma down the stretch. And then our big guys cleaned up the glass uh, when he had the one shot. So not giving them second opportunities and forcing them tough shots, um, you know, gave us a chance to win it. I was actually going to ask you about that defensive play that Isaac made on Kuzma uh, right at the end there. What does that type of defensive play do for a team, for your team, um, to, to close it out? I mean, even with just the energy that that brings. Right. I mean, that's that's it. You know, that's the grind that we have to play with. Um, that's the only way we give ourselves a chance. And the guys knew that, uh, and they gave themselves a chance tonight. Kelsey, here's the athletic. JB, going off of that, how much did you guys need this win just building off of, you know, Pre All Star um, and then the game on Thursday, um, just like two in with all the injuries that have been going on. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I was less concerned about the results and more concerned about the effort and the performance. Um, you know, if we do the things and play the way that we play, I can live with whatever the results are. Uh, you know, I just thought that, you know, our past two games, we weren't ourselves. So, you know, win or loss, if we're ourselves and the best version of ourselves, like we can live with that. And then um, Larry getting um, on the phone on that stretch, especially from the perimeter, um, but just continue, him continuing to work back, but him being able to go on that run, how helpful is that just kind of that spark on the offensive end? Especially? I mean, we, we need all the buckets we can get. Um, you know, and I, I think people have forgotten or underestimated uh, the ability of Lowry and what he's capable of. You know, he's had a difficult year this year with us battling the COVID and the injuries and those things. Um, but he's a hell of an offensive weapon. So uh, we've got to find more and more ways to keep using him. Um, and he's got to continue to contribute the way he did tonight. Ashley, Ashley Bastock, Cleveland.com. JB, you guys had 23 points off turnovers. I mean, you put a few in the first half and that seemed like it was helping keep things close. When you don't have a true point guard, especially out there, how key is it to take advantage of those extra possessions that you guys did? I mean, we've got to manufacture buckets no matter what, you know, no matter how we can. And, um, you know, again, it all starts for us with our defense. And our defense has to – it stops one, but if we can get some conversions where we can get out and transition and get some easy baskets off their turnovers, uh, we need that as well. So we've got to figure out a way to manufacture runs, and that's what we're doing. And then a handful of plays, like I think of Lowry finding Jarrett at the rim with about like three minutes left in the fourth, and – um, Jared and Isaac got a shot blocked, grabbing the ball and going up with it. Like these, the bigs just seem to have so much awareness and seem to be so in tune with each other. Just at this stage of the season, how how key is that again, especially with the personnel issues you guys are having now? Well, I mean, if we continue to play with our three big guys, um, you know, they have to find a way to impact. And you know, again, it's been so in and out. You know what I mean? Like uh, we've missed a ton of time together, so we're still working on that. Um, but, you know, their willingness to try and, you know, their willingness to do for each other will give us a chance. Thanks. Marvel. Marvel right now, our after week in general. Yep. If my notes are right, Jared scored like eight points in a row in the fourth quarter. Just did, did you see him try to take anything upon himself at that point? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, he understood the circumstances that we were under, um, you know, his leadership style is to outwork the man that's in front of him. Uh, and those were the plays that he was making. You know, it wasn't a bunch of just one-on-one -on -one and, you know, those types of plays. Like, he was winning in the trenches um, on both ends of the floor, you know, in that fourth quarter. So he understands how important he is to us and how he can impact winning for us. And you led for hardly, you know, I mean, it was not very much. I mean, but did you have – did you see, like, in the way the second half was going, that with your effort, that did you see something that encouraging? Yeah, I mean, we just believe in these guys. Um, and, you know, we believe that they can find a will and a way. And, and the defensive end of the floor is where it was. 
Um, you know, we talked about beforehand their effort, you know what I mean, and how hard we had to play and the level of competition that we had to bring. And I think, you know, we trust in them to do that and that they're capable. And I think they did that tonight. Yo, G. Maybe because I found Coach uh, Isaac, obviously, without you talking about his defense, but without scoring a lot of points, they're getting too much offense going. You talk about how he affected the game, just loose balls, everything. Uh, I mean, you know, he's the type of player who honestly can score zero points um, and be the most impactful player on the floor. And, you know, it's not sexy. You know, people don't write about it. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you asked about it. Um, but, you know, his impact on winning is second to none and has been, you know, since he's been here with us. You know, we've put him in some extremely difficult situations, you know, since he was a rookie here. And never once has he flinched, never has he wavered. You know, the only thing that he does is try to help us win. And, you know, he wins it uh, in the effort. He wins it, you know, you know, in a way that most people aren't willing to do it. Um, I think that's why we're, we're lucky to have him. And then similar question kind of about Brandon Goodwin. Again, not a huge shooting night, but he kind of affected the game in a lot of ways. Talk about his start. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we asked him, you know, to pick up full court and kind of set the tone for us. Um, you know, be the head of the snake defensively. Let the four guys that are behind you see you working and feed off your energy. Uh, and I think he did a great job of that. And, you know, he guarded multiple people. You know, we had to switch him on the Pope late in the game. Uh, and I thought he did a good job of fighting through screens and trying to – and keeping his water shut off as well. So, um, you know, we've got a bunch of guys that want to help, you know, and he's another one of those guys. Can I ask one more question? Just ask your question, man. I don't mind. <laughs> no, I just wanted to ask that it was in the third quarter, but Kevin misses the first shot block and Jarrett swoops in for a dunk. I mean, it almost felt like a game changing moment, even though it didn't give you the lead. You cut it to one, I think. Just uh, like I said, what kind of awareness does it take from Jarrett to? get that when the possession is not going well? Uh, I mean, it's, it, you know, all of it is kind of the same, right? It's a, a, what do I have to do to help this team win? Um, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be pretty, but what do I have to do? And, you know, our guys are willing to do that. Um, you know, Jared has a motor that allows him to do things that other guys his size they can't do. And he can keep doing it over and over and over again. So, um, you know, he just wants to help us win, and that shows it. Chris Fedor, Cleveland, not down. Hey, JB. What's up, Chris? Can you speak to the impact that Jetty had, especially in the first half, like keeping you guys in the game with his offensive production? <laughs> yeah, he gave us a chance. Um, you know, we were we were struggling offensively, um, and you know, what, what's most impressive to me is like, you know, he took the conversation that we had and he turned it into action. Um, he understands, you know, how much we need him and what he's capable of. And, you know, I thought the past couple games, you know, he was in and out of it. Um, but we talked to him and you know, we knew and told him how important he is to us. And he responded. Given everything that you're missing, has there been a specific conversation with the guys about just like it's time to win ugly? Yeah, I mean, that's that's it. And, our, you know, it's ugly, but it's winning the competition and winning the scrap, right? Like, you know, we can't afford to be pretty and smooth through things right now. You know, that hasn't been our identity to this point. And when you're missing so many, you know, parts of your offense, you've got to figure something else out. And we have to, as an individual and as a team, outwork the man and the team that's in front of us to give ourselves a chance. Uh, and I think we did that tonight, especially in that fourth quarter. Thank you. Last one, Evan. Evan Damer on Facebook News. JB, you mentioned to us the other day um, that you're challenging Evan a little bit to be a bit more aggressive in terms of scoring and in terms of playmaking. We kind of got a glimpse of that tonight. Were you pleased with some of the results you saw from Evan on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah. Um, we know what he's capable of. And, you know, he is a dynamic two-way player um, with versatility and skill, you know, in a frame – that we don't see often. So we need him to be aggressive. We need him to be in attack mode. Uh, we need him working both sides of the glass. Uh, we need him facilitate. We need to be able to put the ball in his hand. So uh, I thought tonight, you know, he was aggressive and he made the right plays.
Thank you. Right, <laughs> All right, thank you. What did you view as your role defensively down the stretch there in the fourth quarter? Um, my role, uh, get everybody in the right place, get everybody where they need to, make sure that I'm talking to them on the defense, and then close it out with the rebound. And all week, I mean, we talked about how to get this group back to how you guys were so successful, which started on the defense event. Right. So to close this game out, mm -hmm. have 10 possessions where they only scored on one of them. Right. Like, how proud are you of what you guys were able to accomplish and get back to where you are? Uh, I'm proud of us. Uh, last game against Detroit, we didn't show out how we wanted to, but I'm still going to be honest and say we still have some way to go. Uh, tonight was a step in the right th direction. It was a step into what we need to do in the future, but I think now it's time for us to string these type of games together. Oh. Um, right now, we're Did, do you have a, I mean, I know JV sort of wasn't happy the other night, but, but I mean, did you get a sense of how important this was to Sort of right. Back on track. Yeah. Uh, you guys saw the tip of the iceberg. You know, we got the rest of it. But <laughs> he uh, he really emphasized that this is a game where we should get back on track, where we have the chance to get back to our identity, uh, put the Detroit game behind us, and move forward to the team that we want to be. Now, when you're down nine and it's uh, it's in the fourth quarter, I mean, somebody. Mm -hmm say something or how did you guys in, sort of impose your will at that point uh everybody was saying everything on the bench everybody was keeping our morale up you know it's it's tough like Kyle Kuzma went eight for 11 from three it's easy to just you know throw in the towel and when the guy is going off like that but the whole bench was kept on cheering us on telling us get another stop get another stop the offense will take care of itself and that's what we did Chris Fedor, Cleveland, that town. Hey, Jared. Hello. In what way did Isaac's defense on Kyle Kuzma, especially in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. impact what Washington was trying to do offensively? Uh, I feel like they went to Kuzma every single time down the stretch. And obviously, I don't blame him. He was having an amazing game. But Isaac stepped up, stepped up and took the challenge to guard him. I don't know the statistics when Isaac was guarding him, but it felt like every time Isaac, you know, went man to man on him, he got a stop for us and one of us got the rebound. I mean, we've spoken about this throughout the course of the year, but just the value of having a guy like Isaac that you can put on somebody mm -hmm. like Kuzma, who's having the game that he's having, or whoever it may be on any given night. Mm -hmm. like, what does that do for you guys as a team? Yeah, it, it does a lot for us as a team. I mean, you look at the stat sheet, you're not going to see the most flashiest numbers from Isaac every single night. But the impact that he has on us off the court and you know on the defensive end, just our morale as a team, it's – it's uh, how do I say it? You just can't put it in the numbers. It's intangible because it gets us going. It gets us to play better defense. Uh, you see him running the court every single time. He just does all the little things you can ask. Thank you. Kelsey. Kelsey Rose the Athletic. Jared filling up on Marla's question. Um, but the effort aspect of this, like how necessary is that, especially when you're missing a lot of guys at the moment of the guard spot, mm -hmm. building off of, you know, like putting the Detroit game behind you, but like just right. showing that you guys can win this way and you won't need to kind of move it forward while you wait for guys to get back. Right. I, it's it's tough in the league. Injuries happen to everybody. And I, our saying, next man up, step up. And, you know, I think Brandon did an excellent job tonight stepping up as, you know, the starting guard tonight. Oh, I mean, he went two for 11, but still, I feel like he was making the right plays for us. He was finding everybody, putting us in the right position. And, you know, Larry's finally coming back in the form. Uh, it's just good that everybody's coming back, you know, finding themselves again and trying to end off the season the right way. Ashley, Ashley Bass, not Cleveland, not Cleveland, Jared. I think there's certain plays in this game, like you're, when Isaac Shaq got blocked and you scoop up the ball and score, and when Lowry finds you at the rim, like mm -hmm. as big, you guys just seem to have such an awareness of everything <laughs> going on around you and right. have such a connection with each other. I guess, like, how key – is that for the way you guys are when you guys are able to, you know, each have a double figure nights like tonight? It's huge. We're all looking for each other. You know, big is going to take care of bigs. And, you know, we pride ourselves on on doing that. 
uh, we know how each other like to play. We know where each other are going to be. You know, I hit Laurie on a, a lob in the first half. Laurie got me in the fourth quarter. You know, we like to just share the ball with each other and just try to figure it out. And then you touched on like how the offense will come if you play defense, but to create all the points you guys did on turnovers tonight, I think you had 23 and it seemed like it was mm -hmm. in part keeping you in the game in the first half, just especially when you don't have a true point guard out there. Right, right. How, how key is that to take advantage of those extra possessions? It's huge. Uh, you know, they, the cliche saying defense wins championships. Defense won us this game. Defense got us those turnovers, got us our points off the turnovers. And that's what we strive off of. And that's what helped us tonight. Thanks. So, Jake. You guys are kind of curious. They say the point guard is kind of the quarterback of the, of the team, mm -hmm. and you guys have had three different quarterbacks in the last four sure. games. What right. kind of challenge is that working mm -hmm. with new point guards? And you talked about Brandon. How how good has he been just in the spot? It's always tough having to switch over from point guard to point guard, but you know every point guard in our system is ready to step up and take the reins. Uh, you know whether it's what Darius, Ricky did it excellently, and even Kevin. Uh, Pingos and every point guard comes in and does their job, but it's still it's still tough. You know they still have to figure out how to run the offense. I feel like every other game we have a different point guard or a different lineup, but we're still making the work out there somehow. Chris and then Chris Thoughts. Jared, the the term "winning ugly" can have a negative connotation to it, mm -hmm. but it sure seems like "ugly" is a word that you guys embrace. <laughs> Why? Because uh, winning's winning. <laughs> you know? uh, at the end of the day, it still gets us that W. Uh, it's a grindy game out there that we play. It's you're not going to see somebody go five for five unless Jetty's hot. You know, it's not like we're going to go out there and do a, a windmill during the game. We're just going to go out there, play basketball, and win the game. You know, <laughs> Thank you. So, Chris Falls. Hey, Jared, Chris Russell, this is Dene Griff. Congratulations on the win, first of all. Uh, you allow 86 points on tonight's game. What does it mean about the willingness and about uh, the way that you can play defense this season? Uh, we've been playing defense excellent this season. Uh, from the beginning, you can ask JB, probably from his first interview with us, that we're going to be a defensive team. We're going to be a defensive stopping team. And that's grown into our identity. That's grown into how we like to play basketball. And, you know, we, we adopted that this tonight, especially. And you close the game with the right way. Do you feel that as the season goes on, as the games goes on, you have, you have the quality to close the games out of, in crunch time and take a responsibility and take the right play in crunch time? Uh, I feel like we... Or slowed down tonight, uh, making the right plays at the end of the game. We slowed down. We didn't get flustered, especially on the defensive end. We were ready to be in the right spots to make the right defensive play, and especially on the offensive end. We slowed down. You know, we got into our sets. We listened to JB's play calls. Uh, we just closed the game out excellent tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank now we got to make sure you know, we continue that and prove ourselves. Was, was tonight kind of one of those nights to uh, prove yourself? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just because I think, you know, we lost three in a row, you know, two before the All-Star break and then after against Detroit. And uh, I think the game against Detroit, that was not really us. So I think th this game was really important in terms of, you know, just come back and respond to that game. And I think even, you know, maybe we didn't play great, but – we always talk it's really important to when we're playing like this. So uh, it was one of those games, but I think we didn't just, we didn't give up. We, we were down, we we're down a couple of bodies. We were down a score, but we still kept playing. And I think that's what makes us special, I guess. Surprised I got to the question without asking you about your eye. Are you doing, are you doing okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm just looking at the middle right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, Kelsey, you're saying that, like, Jenny, how encouraging is it, though, like, when JB has a message for you guys about mm -hmm. a, the, a needed effort, and then you guys are able to do so and turn it around tonight and showcase that effort? Like, how encouraging is that for, like, moving forward? And, and yeah, I mean, you know, JB, JB always uh, keeps us accountable. And, uh, you know, he's our coach, but we really do have a, everybody with him. You know, we have a different 
different relations, you know. Um, so it's we are listening to JB and we do trust him and he do trust us. And, uh, you know, he's he always wants us to get better. And, uh, you know, he, he always gets he always gets our back. So, um, you know, we're really lucky to have him as a coach and uh, he's doing a great job. And, you know, he, he like I said, he's always keeping us accountable. And after the Detroit game, he challenged us. And I think that we respond to it. And he said that he also had a conversation with you. Um, mm -hmm. And so you've been able to be so effective, especially like um, in the, the to start the game, in the, the first half. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, like, what did you take away from that conversation to sort of propel you? Yeah, I always uh, I always like to J uh, talk to JB, uh, you know, especially when I'm when I'm not myself. I always like to ask him, like, what he sees and, you know, what I can do better. So uh, it was, you know, one of those conversations, you know, yesterday. Um, and, uh, you know, I understand what he wants from me. So it's always, you know, good to talk to him and to, to ask him what he sees and what he wants from me. So, yeah, but I mean, you know, I think that I, I did respond after that talk. Thank you. Ash. Ashley Bastock, Cleveland.com. Uh, Jetty, you guys had 23 points off turnovers tonight. I guess just the fact that you were able to take advantage of some of those extra had, possessions. We had 23 points. You guys got 23 points mm -hmm. off turnovers. Um, you guys taking advantage of those extra possessions, especially when you know you're running lineups with, with you at point guard, but mm -hmm. not a true point guard out there. How how key was that to keeping you in the game? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of our uh, that's one of our weapons. I would say we like to play fast. I mean, and we need to play fast because we have a guys who can really run the floor. And uh, I think we did a good job even after the baskets were pushing the ball. But uh, you know, after the turnovers, I think we we did a good job. We're we're sharing the basketball, we're finding easy shots, and uh, we knock him down. And, I mean, that's 23 points is really good. And uh, that's also, you know, very important for us, I think. I mean, we had 92 points, 23 points out of turnovers. I think it was, where yeah. it was a huge part in our game. And then Lowry, I know he took him a little bit to get going until the mm -hmm. second half there, but obviously he's so good at, at spacing the floor and getting going from three. Just, yeah. But it seemed like kind of like a matter of time that he was going to hit a roll like that. I mean, we, we trust him. and. Uh, we know he's a he's a he's a great shooter, and you know he he had six threes tonight. I mean he was he he played great tonight. He played great tonight. I mean Jay was great. I mean I think you know like I said, even if we didn't play great, but I think everybody was fighting. Everybody was hustling, especially defensively. I mean, gotta give credit to Isaac. I mean he did a great job on on Kuzma, especially the last couple of minutes. He really did uh, lock him up. So. Um, but yeah, that was a that was totally team effort tonight. Thank you, Chris. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Hey, Jetty. What's up, Chris? In uh, in what way did JB challenge you guys? Uh, just to be ourselves, just to be the the Cavs before the break. Um, because like I said, I mean, we played so hard for those fifty eight games. I mean, we can we can let it go right now. I mean, after we achieved all that stuff. I mean, I know. Uh, it's still early. I mean, but I mean, we're coming there. It's time to get to the playoffs. So it's time to, to make one more step. And that's what JB challenged us about. Because like I said, uh, I mean, uh, the loss against Detroit, it was not us. I mean, I'm not trying to, um, you know, underestimate anybody. But I mean, we know that we can be better and that we have to be better. And I think that game, we were just not good enough. So that's why it was really important to respond tonight. In what way, if any, Jetty, is it important to win a game in the style that you won tonight's game? I think it is. I mean, first of all, win is a win. And, uh, uh, and yeah, especially when we're down of very important pieces of this team, I think to get this win, and uh, I always say next man, next man up mentality was huge tonight. And uh, I think we everybody did his job. Whatever JB was expecting from us, we did it. And I mean, maybe like I said, we were down from from the beginning of the game, but it, you know, uh, the game's forty eight minutes, so we got it at the end. Thank you. Well, the writing in our Akron Weekend Journal, Jarrett made it sound like JB was pretty hot the other night. Was that like the maddest you've ever seen him? When against Detroit? Against Detroit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was. I mean, you know, but I. I I understand, and we really, you know, I totally understand because, um, like I said, that was not us. And uh, JB expect us to be to be tough every night, to be the best team on the floor every night. And that night, 
we were not. So we totally understand why he was mad at us, and that's why we respond tonight. And I don't want to overplay one game, but you were having a special season, and then it looked like it was on the brink. Did you guys feel that way? I mean, when you were, you know, you're got a losing streak, you know, mm -hmm. you're you were third in the East, you know. I mean, just the ramifications of you don't want to let this go. What you feel? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we always have a short memory, even after the games that we that we win. Um, but we, I I believe that we took a step forward tonight to being the old Cavaliers, you know, before the break. So uh, that was, I think that was a, that was really important for us tonight. And it's time to get now the winning streak again. Uh, we have, we're going to be at home for the next two games. And, uh, you know, uh, the crowd was amazing tonight. I mean, you know, we've got to give a credit to them, but, you know, and I think we win eight games in a row here. So uh, we just want to keep playing. We just want to keep playing good here. Last one, Christos. Hey, Chesdy Christos, this is the Congratulations on the way, first of all. Um, what makes you so effective and so good as a team on defense event? Uh, I mean, we, I mean, <laughs> Twin Towers, I guess, Evan and uh, Larry, and then uh, Evan and uh, Jay, and then obviously Larry as that third guy. I mean, uh, it just, Especially on a, a half court, I, I believe it's really tough to score on us. I mean, we held them on 86 points tonight, and this is a team, a high-scoring team. Like, they've been averaging, like, last five games, I think, 120, and we kept them on 86 tonight. I mean, uh, this is who we are, especially defensively. I mean, that's what – and I think that's uh, what made us go, especially in the last couple of minutes. Uh, and we're playing great defense, yeah. And speaking about your season this uh, with the Cavaliers, I remember your last season in the Anadolu FS, and you have there are moments that you have the same freedom or the same uh, way that you play on offense. Do you feel that you have the same freedom or, or the same responsibility on offensive end? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I understand your question, I mean, I uh, so JB always gives me freedom, especially in the second unit. Um, so, um, you know, he, he gives me a freedom and he, he always tells me to go and do make a right play. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. And I, yes, I'm playing, I have that freedom and I'm, I'm playing in the right way, I think, you know, and that's also, you know, got to thank JB for trusting me and giving me that freedom. You got it. The circular. Thank you. Quite a stop. Thanks, Thank you. Thank All right. Thanks, man. See you guys. Take care of that. Yeah. Right. Hey, Larry. Hey. Um, for you guys to win the game in the style that you won this game, can you speak to the importance of that specifically? Yeah, I mean, like I said on the court, uh, missing some guys, but that's part of this league, and uh, we've got to grind it out, and I think that's been a our identity the whole year kind of show up defensively. And I think we we haven't done as great of a job in it as we would like uh last last couple of games. So just trying to trying to bounce back to that and uh get it done on the defensive end and kind of that makes our offense go to it. You know, not every team in the NBA like embraces that grinded out mentality. Like why does it suit you guys so well? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. We got all the guys believe in it. Uh, I think we're all together in it as a, as a team. And uh, obviously our coach preaches it to us every day. And uh, But it fits our personnel and uh, everyone embraces it. So, uh, so it fits us. Thank you. Ashley. Ashley Bassack, Cleveland.com. Uh, Lowry, I guess in the it took you a little bit to get going with some of those shots, but did you feel like you were getting good looks in the first half? It was only a matter of time until they started falling for you. And yeah, what did I mean, it feel like once they, you hit the, the first couple, I guess? Yeah, and I still made only my only my three. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a work in progress. I, I think I'm still rushing a little bit, kind of getting back to that game speed. I mean, really being – I mean, I had a couple practices before the Detroit game, and it's my second game. I Obviously, I don't want to make excuses, but I do notice myself kind of – 
rushing some of the finishes and uh, just get the timing back. And so uh, obviously the more I get time on the floor, that'll get easier. And uh, so I'm tr trying to figure it out and uh, glad I was able to make a couple at the end. And then, I mean, when you watch like you guys as, as bigs and the connection, it seems like you have, like, I think it's the play in the fourth quarter where you find Jared at the rim and Jared brought up, you know, he found you earlier in the game. And you just seem to have such like an awareness of each other and, and your abilities, I guess, just how key is that at, at this stage of the season? And especially when you don't have a true point guard out there in some of these lineups right now. Uh, yeah, it's important. I, I think we've been the unselfish team to the whole year and I think that's one of our identities as well and uh but just knowing the pressure that Jared for example and Evan puts at, at the rim it's just someone's going to have to make a decision and someone's going to be open and uh I think we're all I said unselfish and we're trying to make the right basketball play find the open guy and uh try and do that as many times as we can during the, throughout the game so <clears throat> I think everybody says it, but I think it's really true with this team. We don't care who who's going to score the basketball or anything like that. We, we're trying to win the game no matter what. And uh, so that's the thing. We're going to find the open guy, and it's going to be some different guy every every night. So, uh, yeah. Thanks. Kelsey Rose, The Athletic. Larry, how encouraging is it when, like, when JB delivered the message after the Detroit game and then the least couple of days of practice and then coming into tonight and then playing with that effort, um, just like moving forward, how encouraging is that that message was received and you showed out? Obviously, he preaches the best to us. And uh, so he's our coach, so we're going to listen to him. And uh, But I think it shows our team as well, kind of, it wasn't just coach who was disappointed after the game. It was all of us and we kind of, that hurt. Uh, we we talked about the games like that. The teams that are lower in standings, and we keep losing them. That's that's going to sing at the end. So, so I, it's not just uh, him saying for us, but I think we just we're holding each other uh, to a high high standard uh, as well as coaches. So we were all disappointed and kind of wanted to bounce back, and from not just last game, but I think last couple of games. So. And then um, with Isaac, you know, we, we talk about his defensive ability a lot, but like just like how helpful and just how important is his defensive effort every night? And just even, you know, when the stats aren't always there, they don't show up on the stat sheet, but just how he plays defense, um, how helpful is that for you guys? Yeah, obviously he's shown he can do stuff offensively as well, but he's, his defense is unbelievable. He gets us going and makes hustle plays and gets – rebound and I think that gets everybody else going as well and so he's a really big piece of it we always talk about the three-man lineup but he having him at the guard spot is, is huge for us and uh, he's been doing a great job. Thank you. Marla. Marla Wagner, Africa Journal. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about the conversation the players were having about losing to you know teams with you know that are struggling is, was that right after the Detroit game or you have you guys been talking about that ever since? Well, we didn't really, we kind of, everybody knew what we were supposed to do. We didn't really even have to talk about it. We were all just disappointed. We, we went through the game uh, the next day, whatever day it was, uh, at practice. And we kind of, like I said, after the Detroit game, we kind of flushed it out, flushed it out after, after that team meeting and the film session and stuff like that and focus on the next one. And uh, that's what we were able to do. And, so yeah, like I said, we were just, we didn't really have the player only meeting or anything like that. So we just kind of, everybody knew what we were supposed to do and uh, we came out tonight and did it. But did you feel like this was sort of an important time for the team, especially with what your goals are? Yeah, for sure. And I, what were we, like three game losing from it? Yeah. So it's always important to knock that out and uh, keep, keep it going. And we, like I said last last time, we every single one of these games are is important. We approach it this that way, and uh, so just trying to get all of them. Uh, but this was a really important to cut that losing streak and uh, get back on track. So, so you have that kind of uh, Larry uh, the Detroit game. You guys only allowed one field goal in the last four minutes, one field goal in the last six minutes tonight. You guys feel like you can hit another gear defensively when you need to. 
Yeah, I do think so. I think we just got to, there was times earlier in the year that kind of had that 48 for 48 minutes and it showed on the scoreboard. And I think we just, it's a process and obviously teams do scouting and learning each other. And uh, so kind of expected, but I think we just want to get back to that, not just having last six minutes. We're trying to have uh, quarters, halves, a full game. And uh, so it's still a work in progress, but I think it shows the, the heart and the grit that we play with, especially down the stretch. Last two from Zoom, Evan and Dan Kristoff. Evan Damerell, Facebook News. Lowry, JB specifically challenged Evan the other day to step up in terms of aggressiveness and just scoring and playmaking. Did you see a little bit of that tonight from him? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, he's shown that he, he can do a lot of stuff uh, on the floor. Even he has nice that uh, he's not scoring the ball. He can still impact the game in so many different ways. And so... I think it's, uh, yeah, when he's aggressive, we're at our best. And um, just, I look at it, I don't know if he meant to that just as an offensive end, but I think defensively he's being active and being aggressive at that end as well. And uh, he gets uh, the energy he brings and gets us going as well. And uh, yeah, love when he's aggressive. Kristoff, finish off, but. Hello, Laura Christos, this is Dini Gris. Congratulations on the win, first of all. Uh, the way that you close the game out, the, uh, the full 48-minute defensive effort, what do they mean for you guys, and how important is it to maintain that effort overall? Yeah, like I said, we're trying to make it even. We're trying to guard like we did the last six minutes of the game. We're trying to guard for 48, and, uh, but that's what we do. Uh, we've been preaching the defensive end of the floor the whole year, and. Uh, we're going to keep doing that and trying to get better every single day. And uh, But this was a good step in the right direction. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>